In this video, we move from simple linear regression into multiple linear regression. And the basic idea is that instead of having one predictor, we're going to have more than one predictor. OK, so previously, we just had one single predictor, x. And now we are going to have more than one predictor. We're going to have x1, x2 through xk. So we have k predictors. So now our regression equation, instead of just being yi equals beta naught plus beta 1 x1 i plus epsilon, this was our simple linear regression using just one x. Now we have more than one x. So we have yi equals beta naught plus beta 1 x1 i plus beta 2 x2 i plus keep going down the line until we get to our last one, beta k times x k i plus epsilon i. So this is our multiple linear regression regression equation. Another way that we can write this is y equals x beta plus epsilon. Just like we saw with simple linear regression, now just the fact that it's multiple regression is hidden inside of the x's and inside of beta. So now x is no longer just n by 2, which it was in the simple linear regression case. Now it's n by k plus 1. And beta has dimension k plus 1. Epsilon still has dimension n by 1, and y still has dimension n by 1. So what does beta look like now so that it has dimension k plus 1? Now beta looks like beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, all the way down to beta k. So we can see that there are k plus 1 of these betas because we have 1 through k. And we also have zero. So that's why we have k plus 1 is the number of betas that we have. OK, so this is beta. And now x still is going to have this first column of 1s and the second column is still going to be the data for the first variable. So we'll have x1i or x11, x12, x13, all the way down to x1n. So that's our data for the first variable. Then we have the data for the second variable. So here's the data for the second variable and the first person, the data for the second variable, the second person, second variable, third person all the way down, second variable, nth person. And then we keep going like this till we get to the last variable, x, k, n. So this is saying it's the kth variable and the um, first person's data, x, k, 1. And then we have x, k, 2, all the way down to x, k, n. OK, so we can see that we have k plus 1 columns. And we have n rows. So we can see that x is n by k plus 1. OK, so beta is k plus 1. x has dimension n by k plus 1. So when we multiply n by k plus 1 with a k plus 1, then we get n by 1. And then, of course, epsilon also has to have dimension n by 1. OK, so this is how we write our regression equation. Now let's think about how do we find beta? How do we find an estimator for beta? We can still use least squares. And remember, in least squares, we were looking for the 
value of beta that would minimize the sum of the residuals, yi minus yi hat squared. So we wanted to minimize those residuals and the betas are hidden in here. So we can rewrite this as the sum of yi minus Well, what is yi equal to, um, or yi hat equal to, yi hat is beta naught plus beta one x one i plus all the way down to beta k x k i. So we're getting each of these residuals, squaring them and adding them up. And we're looking for the betas that will minimize this. Okay, in matrix form, we are trying to minimize y minus x beta transpose y minus x beta. So we're looking for the value of b that would minimize this. And so then we end up with B is equal to X transpose X inverse X transpose Y. So this is how we can get our estimator for beta. All right, in our next video, we'll look at some properties of these um, estimators.